as I was uh, getting parts for my next pedal board, I was facing the issue of uh, which power supply could actually power the HX Stomp by Line 6 because the Line 6 HX Stomp is a power hungry pedal. Uh, the original power supply it came with uh, says it can deliver 3 amps. Um, that's, uh, that's a little more than uh, that it actually consumes uh, because I've tested it and it takes about 1 amp. Um, but there's still there are hardly no uh, power supplies that actually have a 1 amp output. But I came across this one from, uh, from Harley Benton, uh, which has uh, two 500 milliamp outputs. Um, and in today's video I'm gonna make a cable that combines those two outputs so it can actually power the HX stump. Now, um, what I'm gonna need for this is, uh, is two cables. Uh, the Harley Benton power supply was uh, shipped with, uh, with a lot of cables, so I'm gonna use two of those. These are two of them. And to combine them uh, for the power supply for the HX stump. Uh, and I also bought a little plug uh, for, the, uh, for the HX stump because um, the, the original power plug is, uh, is a little bigger than the usual plugs uh, for, uh, for regular pedals. You know, this won't fit. And this will. So I bought this thing at the parts store. And those are the ingredients for this, uh, for this video. So I'm gonna make a, a current doubler for the HX stamp, but I'll also going to show you uh, how you're going to make a voltage doubler, um, which uses the same principle but works a little different. Um, and I'll show you how that, uh, how that actually works. I'll show you how much power the HX stomp uh, usually uh, consumes. I will test this with the regular power supply, so the stock power supply that comes with, uh, with the pedal. Um, and my multimeter. Uh, as you can see, uh, the multimeter is in between the power supply and the HX stump. It's in series, not in parallel. Uh, yeah, there are two leads coming from the power plug going to the positive side of the small plug. And uh, from the negative side, it goes to the multimeter um, back to the plug. And so in this way, you, I can show you how much power it actually consumes. Turn it on. So there you go. You can see it takes uh, 940 milliamps so yeah that works um, the reason I have two leads coming from the uh, from the plug to the to the HX stump is because these wires are so thin it won't let uh, one amp through on one uh, one plug so I'll demonstrate that I'll remove one of the plugs and turn the HX stump back on see it uh, starts rising again but now it can only uh, go to like see the the amps drop and the pedal won't make any sound uh, because the leads can't handle the power so it's absolutely important that the uh, HX stomp really receives uh, the amount of amps that it, uh, it wants to consume. So that's around a uh, thousand milliamps. Turn it back off. So in order to make this work, you gotta make sure that your uh, power supply is uh, truly isolated because this will not work with uh, daisy chains or something like that. The, the current doubler really doesn't do much for, for the daisy chain but the voltage doubler will short the, the daisy chain so uh, that could damage your equipment so um, you gotta make sure you use an isolated power supply now i recently bought the uh, this one the harley benton iso 10 ac pro 
uh, which uh, says is it isolated. There are some doubts about it, uh, and uh, I'll show you uh, how to measure if it's actually isolated or not. Um, so we got my got the multimeter. I'll put it in, in this mode where it beeps when uh, when there's a, when there's a connection. Um, uh, you can measure the uh, the, the negative uh, poles, and you see that there's no connection between them. So it's either no connection or uh, really great resistance. So around uh, let's say one mega ohm or something, and. You see here that it's really not connected at all. There's no connection between, uh, between both the negative poles of the power plugs and, uh, and the positive ones as well, as well. But this is when the, uh, when the power supply is off. So let me turn it on. Maybe a little, a little change because there, there could be some electronic switches in there. It will, um, it will shut the connection off uh, when there's uh, when the power is off. So I always measure it with the with the power connected. And you can see there's still no there's still no connection between uh, between all the negative poles. Uh, so that's okay. It's really isolated, and now we can continue building our current uh, doubler. So I've got these two cables. And I'm removing the right angle side of the cables because you know, got one side that has a straight plug and one side that has an angle plug. And I'm using the straight plug to go into the power supply. And I'm not using the angle plug. So I'm removing those. Leave a little short cable attached so I can reuse them later if I want to. And taking the sleeve off of the edge around a centimeter will be fine I guess. enough. 'Twist the wires with the other one as well. And I'm gonna make sure uh, which is one is the positive and which one is the negative. The black one or the red one. I guess we know what the answer is but yeah I'm gonna check it to make sure. So usually the center is uh, negative on those things, so it should be positive. And here we can see it's the other way around, <laughs> so that's funny. The outside of the plug is the black side, that's the positive. <laughs> and the inside of the plug is the red side, that's the negative. It's kind of counterintuitive, isn't it? But yeah, I guess now we know which is which. So to double the voltage, you have to place the two power sources in uh, in series. It's just like uh, when you do with a, with a battery, because these bo will both uh, will read about one and a half volts. Uh, they're, they're full, so it is a bit more, 1.6. Uh, and when you put them in series, you see uh, it doubles the voltage. There we go, you saw it read uh, about 3 volts. And that's the same with the voltage doubler that I will show you how to make in this video. Uh, we got the two, uh, the two cables that we stripped, uh, I'm going to plug those in. And now, just like with the trick with the batteries I showed you before, we're going to put them in series. We're going to put one side of the cable 
uh, let's say the, the red side on this, this one. I'm gonna connect it to the black one of the other cable. But you, when you gotta make a make a real cable, you gotta solder those, of course. Yeah, those annoying cables, they <laughs> twist around all, all the time. I'm gonna power this on. Uh, and all the LEDs come on, so that means there's no short. Let me get the multimeter. Uh, as you see, uh, we, like we determined before, these cables are a little different. Uh, polarity wise. Hey, voila! There you go. So now you can see it doubles those to 9 volt outputs to one 18 volt uh, power source. So if you gotta make a plug out of it, just solder those leads together uh, that, you, that you've combined and uh, the other two leads uh, connect to the cable and there, then you have a voltage doubler. Show you with the other voltages as well. Uh, let's see, I'm gonna put these on 18 volts. And then you'll see when I connect And now you can see it measures 36 volts because we've combined two 18 volt outputs. So this is how you make a voltage doubler. And now we're gonna make the current doubler, which uses the same principle, but slightly different. The current doubler uh, actually works in, works in the same way, but slightly different. So instead of uh, one black cable connected to the red cable of the other one, uh, we're gonna combine those two red cables and we're gonna combine those black cables as well. So before we're gonna solder, we're gonna put some heat shrinking tube on this as well to make sure the connections, uh, the connections won't short. So we're gonna put some heat shrinking tube on the whole thing, but also a, sh a shorter one on each of the each of the two leads. Well, it's tight, but it's gonna work. So I'm putting some solder on the combined leads. This annoying power lead of the solder iron is a little short. The it'll do for now. And put some solder on the plug as well. So this side is the outer sleeve. So that's gonna be the, the black side. And this side is gonna be the red side. So the heat shrink tube on one end already shrunk when I was soldering, so I put some electrical tape on it to prevent it from shorting to the uh, to the other side of the plug. Let's test it, see if it all works. So there's no short. Oh, 
Oh, that one works. The other one works as well. Let's check the other side. The sleeve. Yep, that works. Yep, that one works as well. Let's put the full heat shrink tube back on the, on the hole plug. So, there you have it. Two leads on one side. You go into the power plant. And one on the other end. This one goes into the HX dump. Alright, time to test our new uh, cable. Let's put this in the uh, 500 milliamp outputs over here. Okay. So far so good. There's no short because Otherwise the lights would flicker. And put this on to uh, still so far so good. It's in the HX stamp. Uh, let's turn it on and see how it uh, how it works. Alright, seems to work so far. No touchy sounds when uh, when you touch the cable. So I guess uh, you could say it works. So this is basically how you make a voltage doubler or a current doubler in this case. First you gotta make sure that you've got an isolated power supply uh, and no daisy chain, otherwise you will get a short circuit. Uh, take two leads, cut one end of the plugs off. Leave a bit extra so you can use them later again if you need to. In case of a voltage doubler, take the positive side of one plug, connect it to the negative side of the other plug and uh, uh, solder the new plug to the other two leads. And in case of the current doubler that I've got over here, take the positive sides of both plugs, solder them together and take the negative sides of both plugs, solder them together and attach a new plug to it. And that's how you make those cables.